Hey, good morning, calculus students. This is Mr. Bolt. I know even when I am gone, you still can't get rid of me. Uh, we're going to take a look at something fairly complicated today. So I wanted to make uh, a bit of a movie here so you guys could see how it works and you don't get behind the other class. Uh, we're going to take a look at what's called related rates today. Um, basically word problems that use implicit differentiation, which your homework was. And if you remember the cone introduction we had with the snow cone that's melting, that's kind of where we're still working towards as we have multiple derivatives that are related to each other. And so we're going to use the skills from your homework problem in some word problems today. I know, cringe, right? So let's take a look at one of these so here's our first word problem uh, if you want to pause the movie to write down a few things don't write the whole thing down but write down some of the important information so I would say some of the important information that you definitely want to have down is we have a gas station with a rectangular tank uh, it's 30 feet long by 20 wide, by 10 feet tall. Uh, the height is dropping one foot every two hours. And we want to know how fast is the volume of gasoline changing. So hopefully you see a few rates in there. Uh, although to start off, I see the rectangular tank. So I'm going to draw a rectangular tank so we can get a good picture. One of the best things you always want to do is draw a picture so you can get an idea of what's happening. So here is our rectangular tank. And then we label the dimensions. It is 30 feet long by 20 feet wide by 10 feet tall all right and then if I keep looking at some of the information the height is dropping one foot every two hours so that is telling me how the height is changing And if you remember, if something is describing to you how the height is changing, that is the derivative of the height with respect to time. And then our question, how fast is the volume of the gas changing, gasoline changing? Well, that's the change of the volume. So that is the derivative of the volume with respect to time. And that is what we're trying to find. Um, and they tell us the DHDT, right? They say the height is dropping one foot every two hours. That is one foot every two hours. Or half a foot an hour. Those two are the same thing. So we know DHDT and we know dv dt, but we don't actually have any equations yet. So we need an equation. Uh, we're taking a look at volume. So I think our volume equation is one of the best things that we can take a look at right now. So volume. Volume for a rectangular prism such as this, length times width times height. And then we're going to do what you did for your homework. If we want dv dt, we have to take the derivative of both sides of this equation. So we take the derivative of the left and the derivative of the right. As you can see on this side, we have dv dt, which is actually what we want. That's what we're trying to find. So we're just going to leave that alone. On the right side, we're taking the derivative of length times width times height. As you can see, the variables 
do not match. We've got an H and a T, a W and a T, an L and a T. Uh, you should cringe a little bit at that because length, width, and height are all multiplying. So that looks like it's going to be two product rules. Uh, don't worry, we're not actually going to do that. One of the main things you want to think about in a related rates problem is what is actually changing. We have length, width, and height. Are they all actually changing? So when I come over to my drawing here and I think about the gasoline in this tank, and it is of course dropping, we're using it up, what is changing as that water level, well, gasoline level, goes down? As it goes down, the height is definitely changing. The height is going down. But as our level of gasoline drops, it's still always going to be 30 feet long, and it's always going to be 20 feet wide. Always. Even when there's only an inch of gasoline left, it's still going to be 20 feet by 30 feet. So the length and the width aren't actually variables. They're constants. So the equation we actually have is volume equals 20 times 30 times, move over a little bit here, times h. Or we have 500, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking correctly, 600. six hundred h Th and that's what we're going to take the derivative of as you see that derivative is going to be a whole lot easier so we have the derivative of the volume with respect to t which is what we want to find equals six hundred h and we take the derivative of that, the derivative of 600h is simply 600. But of course you see the variable match. So t dt equals 600 times. The variables don't match, so we have to add a h. dt. And thankfully, we know dh dt. dh dt is up here. It is how the height is changing. It is half a foot every hour. So this is going to be 100 times 1 half, which equals 300. And then we need some units. Uh, we're using feet and hours, it looks like. So that is 300 cubic feet still running out of room here hour that is how the volume is changing which answers our question okay um and uh, oh one thing I didn't catch this Technically, the volume is going down, right? So that should be negative. So I'll put a negative in there. Always good to check the common sense of your answer. Uh, where did I lose the negative? I think it's just from right here at the 1 half. The height is changing at negative 1 half. And so you'd have it right there. Not a huge deal there. You can hopefully interpret your answer pretty well. Uh, that's the first one my computer's slowing down here, so I'm going to make a new video for the next problem. We've got a couple more we're going to do.